with God, all things are possible. We are sufficient. The prophet Isaiah speaks into a people who are experiencing deep anxiety. Perhaps we know something about that. And this is God's vision for what it is to live in communion with the holy. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And God will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. And the disgrace of God's people God will take away from the earth. For God has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for God so that God might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. And the second reading this morning echoes the story we heard last Sunday, which is the story of the Good Samaritan, and someone comes up to Jesus to try to test him, and Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, which we heard last Sunday. But from Mark's gospel, we can't hear this commandment enough. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus and his disciples and the legal scholars and religious scholars disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. May God add a blessing to the hearing of this word. This Sunday, as I mentioned, we are commencing a full year. Why would you only party one day? A full year of celebrating what it is to be a cathedral established at the crossroads of a grand city. There is a 150th celebration committee of people who have met and planned and prayed about how we can name the wonder of a church that has blessed and challenged and endured and thrived. We have, Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church has done so much in the midst of a city that has continuing need of who we are, and what we seek to offer as blessing and as witness to our core belief that all people are our neighbors. So if you are a part of that 150th committee or have sat around that table, will you stand so we can thank you? I know you're here. Thank you. It is so poignant to begin the celebration of our history and of our promise on this, which is All Saints Sunday. And it is powerful to name that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. I invite you to look around you. I know it's not polite in church but just do it. You can even look behind you. There are witnesses in the stained glass windows 
bearing witness to the story of our faith. They have stories to tell. There are witnesses in the people sharing your pew on this morning in this sanctuary space or those of you who are joining us online. You are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and you, each of you, have such beautiful stories to tell. You are witnesses to the power of God's claim on your life, a claim that calls us each, and sometimes I'd rather take a pass on this, to the messy and the priceless art of loving and living in the way of Christ Jesus. That's our job description. Our why our essential reason for being is to learn about Jesus, to inspire and to sustain a people who live and love in the way of Jesus. And I'm not talking about just sweet love, though together, often our life together is stunningly sweet. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right then. But I'm also talking about the messy vexing, challenging, gritty, courageous, and transformational love that happens whenever two or more are gathered together. We disagree with each other sometimes, yes? Yeah, we do. Love that endures disappointment is our holy call. Love that endures disagreement, love that trusts that whatsoever we do to and with each other, those we know and those we do not know, all that we do, we do to the living heart of Christ Jesus. That's who we are. So as followers of Jesus Christ, we proclaim that our living of faith is not an individual only adventure. We are a communal people. Our commitment to Jesus calls us to commit to sharing our prayers, our presence, our service, our witness, and our gifts in ways that promote unity, even when it's hard. In ways that promote healing. And in ways that bear witness to transformation. So we call this collection of human beings trying to do a really hard thing, we call it church. Welcome to church. So I ask you whether you are here for the first time or the 50th time, how does this church help you live the love ethic of Jesus Christ? And I hope that there is an answer that comes to your heart. It feels especially important because next Sunday we will gather together as a people who are changed from who it is we are today. This national election is a defining moment for our nation and for all of creation. We may gather next week with hearts that are broken or frightened or hopeful or elated. All of these things are possible and there is so much we just do not know, right? But what we do know is this, we will have a place to go, this place to remember that we are a people grounded in the vision, the audacious, loving vision of Christ Jesus. Whether we are attending online or in person, we name together then, a week from now, this powerful truth that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, 150 years of Sunday school teachers. God bless them. Yeah? Yes. We are surrounded by all of the baptisms and weddings and choirs and their directors. By all of the pastors, God help us each and every one. 
by all of the ushers, by all of the funerals that have been held here, by all of the missioners, by all of the coffee servers, by all of the potluck plotters, all of the tens of thousands who have come here to light a candle on, New on Christmas Eve. We are surrounded by the children and the youth and the koinonia campers and the counselors and the sacred journey worshipers and the dignity center guests and this 12-step group attendees who see the proclamation of our spire in the middle of the city and they believe the promise it proclaims that we are here we are in this city for good and our building proclaims it Every stone in this cathedral is saturated with story and with proclamation. Every stone in this building is held by the mortar of hope. And our actions sustain the ministry. Not only learning about the why of how we do this life, but choosing to live it. We fall down and we get back up again and we believe we can do this hard thing because we proclaim a vision for lived compassion that is antidote and it is flat out resistance to any force that would proclaim hatred and fear. We are here and we will not have it. We are Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church. We are a cathedral for all creation and all of our neighbors. I want to share with you a story in the Jewish tradition. It goes like this. When the great rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov saw misfortune threatening the Jewish people, it was his custom to go into the certain part of the forest in order to meditate. And there he would light a fire, he would say a special prayer, and the miracle would be accomplished, and the misfortune would be averted. Later, when his disciple, the celebrated Magid of Mezertich, had occasion for the same reason to intercede with heaven because the community was under siege, he would go to the same place in the forest and he would say, Master of the universe, listen. I have forgotten exactly how I am to light the fire, but I'm still able to say the prayer. And the miracle would be accomplished. Still later, Rabbi Moshe Lev of Sasov, in order to save the people once more, would go into the forest and he would say, I don't know the right way to light the fire. I don't know the exact prayer, but I do know this place and this must be sufficient. And it was sufficient and the miracle happened. And then it fell to Rabbi Israel of Ritzin to overcome misfortune for his people. And sitting in his armchair with his head in his hands, he said, I am unable to light the fire and I do not know the prayer. I can't even find the place in the forest. But what I can do is tell the story. And this must be sufficient. And it was sufficient. No matter what happens this coming Tuesday and the days that follow, we are here. And this body of hope is far from done. God calls us to remember and to hold as precious the power and the audacious promise of the story that we have to tell. We are a people committed to love kindness, to do justice, and to remember the commitment we share. We will love our neighbors. No exception. With God, all things are possible. 
We are sufficient. Miracles are real. And this is the story to which we hold from 1 John. It goes like this. In the beginning was the word. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Sorry. (laughs) I marked it. I really did. There we go. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not, will not overcome it. This is our story. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Mm. 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 Thanks.